Hey everybody, my name's Ben, we are the Beard Guys, and welcome to the ultimate guide to PUBG in 2022. I'm going to briefly sum up as many different game mechanics and features as I can whilst keeping this video at a sensible length. I'll put a full chapter list in the video description down below, so feel free to browse that and find the parts that are most useful to you, as it's going to be a lot of information to take on board in one hit. If you have any questions about any of the topics below or others that I might have missed, then leave a comment down below or jump on our live stream at twitch.tv slash thebeardguys and ask me there. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, extended mags, quick draw mags and extended quick draw mags. Most guns in the game can use these different types of mag. The extended will give you the biggest mag size possible, the quick draw will increase your reload speed by up to 60% and the extended quick draw will give a fairly large mag size and a 15% faster reload. So the extended quick draw basically does both jobs but not quite as well as either of the other two individually. Usually the extended quick draw is still going to be your best bet but the other two do have their uses. Number two, grips. There are several different grips available that certain guns can use and they all do slightly different things. They can help with recoil, weapon stability, ADS speed and some other factors. I'll put the full details of what each grip does on screen for you now but to summarize in brief for full auto spraying the vert grip is usually your best choice and the half grip, angled and thumb grip will also do the job. For single tap shooting the lightweight, vert grip and thumb grip will all be pretty decent. The laser sight also goes in a grip slot and improves hip fire accuracy as well as giving you a laser dot sight. Number three, muzzles. The three types of muzzle available for most guns are the flash hider, compensator and suppressor. The flash gives you minor recoil reduction as well as hiding your muzzle flash. The comp gives you even more recoil reduction but doesn't hide your flash and the suppressor gives no recoil control but makes your gun sound awesome and be much quieter and it also hides your flash. So use the comp for recoil, use a suppressor for being sneaky and use a flash hider if you can't find a comp. There's also not much point putting a compensator on a bolt action sniper as the recoil control doesn't really help you. The choke and duck bill are both also muzzles that can only go on shotguns with the choke reducing pellet spread and the duck bill reducing horizontal spread so the pellets make a thin vertical line. Number four, scopes and sights. The red dot and hollow are both for short range whilst the canted gives you a red dot and then another slot that you can put a long range scope into. You can then switch between the canted red dot and the other sight by alt right clicking on PC or pressing X on Xbox or square on PlayStation whilst aiming down sights. ARs can take scopes up to a 6x and then at DMRs and snipers can also use the 8x and the 15x with the 15x only being available in airdrops. You can change the look, color and brightness of many of these sights in the gameplay settings menu and on PC you can adjust your reticle brightness by just scrolling the mouse wheel. The 6x, 8x and 15x can also be zoomed in and out by scrolling the mouse wheel when ADSing on PC or by holding the right bump and down and moving the left stick up and down on a controller. Number five, bags and carry weight. You can increase your carrying capacity by equipping a level one, two or three bag. Wearing any vest will also give you 50 extra carry capacity and your utility belt gives you 50 extra space too. If you unequip the utility belt in the character customization screen, it will automatically give you one back when you try to play a game. If you drop it mid game, however, to pick up an emergency parachute shoot for example you will lose that 50 carry capacity. Number six vests. Level one, two and three vests can be found on the ground on all maps with level three vests being guaranteed inside airdrops. The higher the vest level the greater damage mitigation it has as well as having more durability meaning it will last longer before it gets broken. As mentioned before vests also give you 50 extra carrying capacity so you can fit more stuff in your bag. When a vest does break it will stay equipped and offer a very small amount of damage mitigation as well as retaining its carrying capacity. Number seven, 
helmets. There are three levels of helmet in PUBG, with level three helmets only being available inside of airdrops and other special loot locations, apart from on Vikendi, where they can spawn anywhere. A bolt action sniper can one shot anyone in a level one or two helmet with a headshot. The only protection against a one shot is a level three helmet. Level three helmets will keep you alive when you're on full HP against any single shot in the game, except for shots from the AWM, which is only found in airdrops. Number 8. Healing and Boosting There are several healing items in the game, including the first aid kit, which will heal you 75 HP over a few seconds, up to a maximum of 75 health. Bandages will slowly heal 10 HP each, again up to a maximum of 75, and med kits will heal the player all the way up to their maximum HP of 100. The other way to get to full health is by using boosts. Energy drinks give you 40 boost, painkillers give you 60, and adrenaline syringes give you the max boost of 100. Boosted players can run and cycle faster and will also heal damage over time, allowing you to get to max HP. Number 9. Reviving Teammates When one of your teammates gets reduced to 0 HP, they will get knocked, and they will slowly bleed out unless they get revived. It takes 10 seconds to revive someone unless you have a critical response kit which are only found on Paramo which will allow a one-off one second revive. The more times someone has been knocked in a game, the faster they will bleed out. Knocked players can crawl around and even swim in water until they're revived or dead. You can also now pick up knocked players, friend or foe, and move them to a different location. Picking up players slows down their bleed timer and even allows you to still hip fire your main gun whilst you carry them to safety or throw them on a train track. There is also a self revive kit available only on Tago, which allows players to somewhat noisily revive themselves even in single player games. Number 10 comeback BR. Generally, if you're knocked and then finished off or bleed out, then the game is over for you. But on Tago, you get a second opportunity with comeback BR. If you get killed early on on Tago in a squad or duo game and some of your team still remain alive, then you'll be put into the comeback BR arena after waiting for a few minutes. In this mini BR, you just have to stay alive for a short period and then you can drop back in. You can loot up in the comeback BR arena, but there aren't any bags, so you can only carry so much. It's usually pretty easy to survive and then you'll be dropped back into battle by a helicopter. Number 11, the maps. There are currently eight different maps in PUBG with another planned for release later this year. A pool of five maps is usually available during any one season and the maps to be picked from are Erangel, Miramar, Tago and Vikendi for the big maps and then Sanok, Paramo, Karakin and Haven for the small and sometimes tiny ones. Ranked mode uses a different selection of maps and is currently Erangel, Miramar and Tago but this may change season to season. Many of these maps have different guns in neighborhoods or disabled on them, as well as various unique features. It's a bit much to cover all of them in detail today, but I'll do my best to go through some of the key items and game mechanics that may catch you out. Number 12, the play zone. The play zone will gradually shrink down throughout the course of each match, with players taking damage if they are caught outside of it. The later the play zone, the more damage it will do, and these effects are increased even further when playing in ranked mode, as well as the gap between circles being being shorter. The first few zones do fairly low damage, so try not to let them panic you too much, but do try and keep an eye out for vehicles when you first land, just in case you get caught miles from the zone. Number 13 the red zone and the black zone. When you see a red circle marking the map or mini map, this is indicating a red zone. After a short pause, bombs will start raining down from the sky in these areas, so get out of them quick or get yourself inside if you want to remain safe. On Karakin only, there is the black zone, which has a similar effect, but it only targets buildings and it can actually destroy them. So make sure you get well clear of any buildings in the black zone or start praying. Number 14 airdrops. Most of the maps in PUBG will have airdrops available that can be collected, offering the players high tier loot and special guns. On most maps, these will be dropped periodically by a plane, except on Paramo, where a helicopter flies over the map, which needs to be shot at in order to make it drop the crate. On Tago, the plane will drop a ton of crates instead of just one. With the exception of some of the small crates you get on Tago, these main airdrops contain one of the crate exclusive guns, which are currently 
the AWM, the P90, the Groza, the Org, the MG3, and the MK14. You can also get the Lynx AMR sniper rifle in crates exclusively on Miramar. The Lynx is the only gun that can shoot through BRDM's windows, and it can also one-shot small vehicles such as bikes. As well as one of these guns, the crates will also contain a level 3 helmet, a level 3 vest, and sometimes a level 3 bag and other assorted scopes and items. 15 times scopes are also only available in airdrops. Airdrops will always drop in the play zone, or at least the play zone that was there when the plane arrived on the map, and can be seen from a long way away, so watch out for enemy players who also have the same idea as you. Number 15 flares. Occasionally, you may find a flare and flare gun laying around on the ground. This can be used to call in an airdrop on your location or a BRDM, which is a massive, heavily armored vehicle. The BRDM can't have its tires burst, it can drive on land and on water, and its windows can only be shot through by the Lynx AMR Sniper, which is only available in airdrops and only on Miramar. It gets less health in the duos mode and less health still in solos to help balance it. In squads, where it has full health, it can take a lot of punishment to blow it up. To use the flare, make sure you fire it directly up in the air or it won't work. If it doesn't stay in the sky, then you did it wrong. If you use a flare when outside of the play zone, then it will call in a BRDM. And if you use it when within the play zone, then it will try and call in an airdrop, provided there is one available. You'll need to wait until the first circle has closed in order for there to be one available. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner of your screen when you're holding a flare, if there is one currently currently ready. There are only a finite allocation of these airdrops per phase, so if another player uses one before you, then your flare may not work or you'll need to wait till the next phase. Number 16. The Exploding Plane On Tago, you'll sometimes find yourself in a plane that is on fire and plummeting towards the ground at the start of the game. These planes will not make it all the way across the map, so you'll be forced to jump early. If you don't get out before a certain point, it will boot you out and you'll lose some health. Sadly, the plane does not actually crash into the ground, which would be absolutely awesome. Number 17 error zones. Tego also features these strange random marked areas on the map called error zones. Whilst they might look very important and exciting, all they really mean is that guns that do not normally spawn on that map will have a chance of spawning there. So you might be able to find a DBS, a VSS, or a QBZ, or other unusual guns. Number 18. Keys and Secret Rooms Tego and Paramo both feature secret rooms that can be unlocked with keys that you find on the ground. These rooms contain all sorts of interesting loot and I absolutely never remember where they are or use them at all. If you can memorize the locations, especially on Tago for squad games, then they could come in pretty handy, but the loot is already pretty good on both these maps, so they aren't the most critical things in the world. Number 19 vending machines. On Miramar, you can find these vending machines dotted around the map that allow you to press a button to grab yourself a booster. If you get really lucky, you'll hit the jackpot and get a whole heap of boosts out of it, which sadly isn't a feature I've ever seen on a vending machine in real life. Eventually, they will run out and break, and you can also shoot them up to make them make a funny noise. Number 20 vehicles. There are tons of different vehicles available now in PUBG, with many being specific to certain maps. Most land vehicles can boost to go faster by holding down shift on PC or the left bumper on controller. You can also change seats by pressing control and the number you wish to switch to, or by tapping A on Xbox or X on PlayStation. On console, you can switch directly back to the driver's seat by holding down the change seat button rather than tapping it. As well as that, you can also turn off your vehicle's engine whilst driving, allowing you to quietly ghost up towards enemies. You can toggle your engine off by pressing Z on keyboard or by holding down left on the D-pad on controller. Number 21, shooting from vehicles. Passengers in most vehicles can shoot whatever guns they like out of the windows, and you can also do it as a solo by quickly switching to a passenger seat to shoot and then back again. Just make sure you don't let go of accelerate until you've switched seats or the vehicle may slam its brakes on. Passengers on smaller vehicles such as bikes can only use smaller weapons such as SMGs and pistols. Drivers can also now shoot pistols from the driver's seat simply by ADSing on PC or by clicking and holding in the right stick and then tapping LB to fire on controller. You can then reload with X on Xbox or Square on PlayStation, then click in the right stick again to put your gun away. Number 22 gliders. 
Gliders spawn around the edges of the map on Erangel and Miramar, as well as at the airfield on Sanok. They all start empty, so you'll first need to find a gas can and then use it whilst in the glider to refill the tank. Gliders can carry one passenger or you can just go solo and switch seats to shoot and med. You'll want to make use of shutting off your engine and coasting as your fuel can run out pretty quick. Remember that unless you are on Miramar and have picked up an emergency parachute, then jumping out when high in the air is going to end pretty badly for you. You can bin them into the ground at pretty ridiculous speeds without really taking much damage just watch out for the rotors when you get out as they can and will kill you number 23 the Porter. The Porter is a unique vehicle to Tago and is a small truck that allows you to put items in the back of it as well as transport your team. This mobile storage locker can take a whole ton of goodies including vests, helmets and guns but they are pretty weak and slow and if they get destroyed then anything in the back will also be lost. Number 24 the bicycle. Bicycles were added fairly recently to PUBG and they are found folded up on the ground like most normal loot. You have to pick them up and then select them in your inventory to deploy them and then you can happily cycle around the battlefield. They take up a lot of bag space but they are good fun and can get you out of a sticky situation and as well as this they are invincible and can jump over obstacles going higher and faster if you're fully boosted. You can also tap A on Xbox, X on PlayStation or W on PC to cycle faster. Number 25. Vehicle spawning. Vehicles in PUBG spawn alongside roads and in garages around the maps. In ranked mode, there are a few fixed vehicle spawns, but in normal matches, they spawn at random within a set number of possible spawn locations. Learning where it is possible for vehicles to spawn is very useful, and learning where the garages are around the map is also very handy as these have a higher chance of spawning something for you. Number 26. The Loot Truck. These loot trucks on Sanok drive around the map following set paths and can be destroyed to access a bunch of nice loot. They'll drop loot boxes as they get damaged and once fully destroyed, you can get inside it or stand next to it and loot the truck's contents. You can stop them for a few seconds by using spike strips and you can even attach C4 to them, but they do take a fair bit of damage to bring down. Number 27. The Emergency Parachute The Emergency Parachute is currently only found on Miramar and Haven, but may well be added to other maps in the future. It replaces your utility belt, so you'll lose carry capacity if you pick one up, and you can find them on the roofs of tall buildings. As you can imagine, these give you a parachute and you can use that when jumping off of buildings or out of gliders and can come in pretty useful for some crazy plays. Number 28, Emergency Pickup the emergency pickup comes in these giant duffel bags and can be deployed on the ground. Once set up, it will summon a plane that will fly over the bag and pick up any players that have attached themselves to the line. It can carry up to four players and will fly towards the center of the play zone. They weigh a lot, but are very useful if you find yourselves far from the play zone or with a dangerous route in and are also great for accessing hard to reach elevated positions. Number 29, the Jammer Pack. The Jammer Pack is a backpack found on a few different maps that gives you some resistance to the blue zone. It takes damage instead of you whilst you're in the blue zone until its charge runs out. It takes this damage at the same rate that you would take it, meaning in an early phase it will last for ages, whereas in a late zone it will go very quickly. In terms of carrying capacity, it's the same as a level two bag. Number 30 gas cans. Gas cans can be picked up and used to refuel vehicles and can also be destroyed with gunfire or explosives to damage nearby enemies. If you equip a gas can, you can throw it a short distance where it will spill some flammable gas on the floor or you can pour it out to create a line or a large puddle of gas. You can then ignite this by shooting at it or throwing something explosive at it. Number 31. The drone. The newly released drone is available across all maps and is a small remote spy drone controlled by the player holding the drone tablet. It makes noises and has a blinking light, making it not super stealthy, and it can fly up to 300 meters away from the player in order to gain intel. As well as this, it can also pick up a single item off the ground and bring it back to a player, and it can also be sent flying back to you in a straight line by hitting the recall button. Drones have just 35 HP and can be destroyed by pretty much 
much anything, but the player can then pick it up and repair it again. Number 32, EMT gear. The EMT is a piece of tactical gear that players can pick up that will take up one of their primary weapon slots. When carried, it will give the player a ton of buffs to their healing abilities at the sacrifice of losing the weapon slot. When in your inventory, but not actually held in your hands, the EMT will give you the following benefits. First aids, medkits and bandages will take just three seconds to use. You can revive teammates in three seconds. You walk much faster when healing. Bandages and first aids will heal you to full health and medkits will give you full boost. In addition to all that, if you're actually holding the EMT in your hands, then it will also allow you to heal your teammates. Keep in mind that it will not give you the shortened revival time or the healing boosts when you're in the blue zone. Number 33, the mortar. The mortar is a weapon only available on Tago and can be deployed to fire mortar shells at enemy locations. It takes a primary weapon slot and it's an absolute pain in the ass to find anywhere where you can actually deploy it. And once you do, the chance of you actually hitting anything with it are so low, it might as well be a confetti cannon. It can be a laugh for trying silly stuff or hoping for a one in a million shot, but it's generally pretty much useless and I wouldn't be surprised to see it removed at some stage. Number 34, basic throwables. There are a ton of different throwables in the game now, but the basic ones are still the frag, stun, molotov and smoke grenades. Throwables can all be thrown underarm or overarm by right clicking on PC or by clicking on LT or L2 on controller. You can also cook a grenade before you throw it by pressing R on PC or LB, L1 on controller. Frags have a five second fuse whereas stuns and smokes have just three seconds. Molotovs will spread fire over a wide area spreading faster when on wooden floors and can also be thrown straight through doors. Number 35, special throwables. There are a few other items that can also now go in your throwable slot. The spike strip can be deployed to burst the tires of enemy vehicles, though it won't do anything to BRDMs or for some reason, bicycles. The sticky bomb, which is only found on Karakin, will stick to a surface and explode after a few seconds and a lot of noise and sadly can't be stuck to enemy players. C4 has a very long fuse and makes a loud beep alerting players to it, but it makes a huge explosion that will even damage you through walls and floors, so keep well away when you hear that beeping. It can be attached to cars and sent flying towards the enemy for excellent results. The decoy grenade can be thrown and it will play some random gunfire sounds which can then be used to trick and bait your enemies. Lastly, the blue zone grenade is currently only available on Tago and will create a mini blue zone around it which will deal significant damage to anyone within. Multiple blue zone grenade damage does stack so they can be incredibly deadly if you get caught out by some. Number 36 Gameplay settings. In the gameplay settings menu, there are a bunch of useful things that you may wish to have a browse through. In here, you can configure your crosshairs, enable auto reload and auto equip settings, as well as changing other random stuff like the hide helmet setting. You can also set default firing modes for different guns and just generally find a lot of stuff that is worth tweaking, especially on console where button space is pretty limited and looting and inventory management is trickier. Number 37 custom controller settings. If you're playing PUBG with a controller, you can now set up pretty complicated custom control schemes. You can access these via the system menu and then controller settings, and then create a custom layout based off one of the presets. Type A controls use toggle for ADS, whilst type B will use hold to ADS, which a lot of players may be more familiar with. If you click in the right stick on this menu, you can also set up various hotkeys, allowing you to take meds, equip throwables, or change seats in vehicles by pressing various button combinations. Number 38, training mode. Once you've played through the basic training and then checked out the training modes versus AI, you can then access the normal training map. On here, you can test out all the different guns and attachments in the game of various targets or other players with the reassurance that you can't be killed. You can go into these buildings and click the console to drop in at a different location. And you can also now go through this door and enter a private shooting range away from other players. On top of all that, they now have made it so you can spawn in whatever guns or equipment you want by pressing the comma key on PC, holding the view or back button on Xbox, or holding the touchpad button on PlayStation. Number 39 
Ranked Mode. Ranked Mode is only available for those with Battlegrounds Plus and runs in seasons where players try to compete to push their rank as high as possible in a more competitive match setting than public lobbies. Ranked games have just 64 players, increased loot, faster and more deadly circles, and players will gain or lose points for their rank depending on their kills and placement for each game. You have to play several placement games first to determine your initial rank, and once played, you're restricted to play with players within 10 ranks of yourself. Quitting out of games and backing out of maps will get you punished in ranked with docked points and also temporarily locking you out of games. Number 40 custom games. Custom games can be played by anyone, but in order to host them yourself, you'll need to have Battlegrounds Plus. Custom games allow you to make private lobbies and tweak tons of different settings so you can play competitive matches, test things out, or just do some silly stuff with your friends. I regularly host custom games for our community on PUBG Console Edition on Fridays, so if you want to come and test them out, then check out our stream on twitch.tv slash thebeardguys. Number 41 bots. PUBG sometimes will use AI bots to fill up the lobbies, but it will always try and use real players first if it can. The exceptions to this are the casual mode and training mode versus AI, where you're purposely put in lobbies with tons of bots in order to let you practice. In normal lobbies, PUBG will try and fill the whole match with real players, and then if matchmaking is taking too long, it will fill up the remaining slots with AI. Personally speaking, in EU console solos that I mainly play, I usually have a max of one bot per game, but this can vary depending on what region, game mode and time of day that you play the game. Bots are usually pretty easy to identify by their erratic movement and terrible loot, but you can use third-party websites such as pubglookup.com to check your game stats and see exactly how many bots were in your games. Number 42 contraband crates. Contraband crates and progressive weapons are PUBG's version of loot crates and are a great way to burn through your hard-earned cash. You can purchase crates using G-Coins and hope that you manage to unlock a special gun skin. From there, you can splash tons more money on even more crates and try to get schematics in order to upgrade your progressive weapon skin to look real fancy. You can get lucky and get a free gun skin from one free crate you came across, or you can sink literally hundreds hundreds of dollars and get absolutely nothing useful. It's in-game gambling at its worst and I wouldn't waste your money on it. Instead, look at options such as survivor passes when they come along, which normally cost around 10 bucks and can give you a ton of different cosmetic items just for leveling them up in-game. So that is everything for today. If you have any additional information you want to share or things I may have missed out, then please leave them in the comments down below to help other players out. Don't forget to drop a like on this video and share it with your newbie friends if you did find it helpful and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Ben. We are the Beard Guys and I'll see you next time.